So um, African people knew that if they destroyed the environment, we destroy the human race. So we um, have this close relationship with the environment where we think um, believe that we are not superior to animals and trees or fishes or birds or any, any living thing, that we are all connected. And that all of us, each of us have a connection to a spirit animal, a bird or a fish or something that we can go to for, for our guidance at any time we would want to. Um, I, I pulled two um, proverbs from Credo, Baba Credo Mutwa, who is our son Lucy. And he said, that which scratches the well animal scratches the human being. And he said, he who buries the tree must bury the well animal. And after that, he must bury his own ox and ultimately bury his children. So um, I say that we say these proverbs to help remind us of our interconnectedness with animals, with plants, with rocks, crystals, everything that we are not separate. Um, the great mother, Ma, we call her Ma. Um, she was known as a shapeshifter and she's also depicted as a half a, a human with a one human leg and a one animal leg or a, a human leg with toes that are roots. So it just helps us to remember our connectedness with animal, plant, deity, um, and that we were not separate. So for us, generally in the tribes, you know, in Asia, Africa, each tribe had an animal totem and they would rever this animal and the animals that were connected to it. And they had the belief that when you die, your first reincarnation would be in this animal totem. So it was really revered. Um, some tribes also had trees as totems or birds, but you know, these were guarded with their, their lives. Um, for us, based on what animals we are connected to, we also have taboos on, in terms of what to eat. Um, and it still exists today. So for us, we honor animals through song. So we have songs that sing about certain animals and um, the, the characteristics of the animals. So we embody these animals through um, what we wear as well. Uh, so sometimes you would see us with, well, you see um, my Baba's cloth, it's lion, you know, they might be leopard or different um, ancestral cloths that we wear to embody and honor the animal spirits that walk with us. Um, we might also wear parts of the animal like you know, shells, you know, I have curry shells, you, you might have bones. We use the bones for um, divination, so divination tools. Parts of the animals are used for healing. Of course, there's ritual um, sacrifice as well. Um, and these animals are then used to feed the whole community when the community comes together in a um, ritual ceremony. Um, in regards to plants, um, the San people were the earliest medical practitioners, the San Bushmen, and a lot of the knowledge was lost from them. However, there's still a lot of information that we still have to this day. Uh, we call our plant medicine muti, um, and it is, it is harvested with great respect and with um, the laws of conservation. And um, muti could be plants, or it could be a mixture of plants and animals, but it's just used to heal in different ways. Um, we, I think Baba would have mentioned, we use plants in ancestral communication. So one example is in Pepo, that we burn it, it crosses the blood brain, brain barrier and uh, puts us in a really relaxed state, maybe a trance state. Um, it's said to carry your prayers to heaven or prayers to the divine. Um, that's one way that we use plants as just one, example in terms of ancestral communication. We use plants as antiseptic 
to smudge people, to remove lower vibrational energies or entities. Um, we used snuff. So you might see some someone was using snuff, like even before like divination or, but it helps to clear the mind. Some say it helps to um, clean the pineal gland or decalcify the pineal gland and help us to connect even more deeply. Um, and it could also be an offering to the ancestors within our bodies. Plant medicines, we use it for dreaming as well to help take us on different dream journeys to help us to recollect information from ancestors from in our bloodline. So we, we can um, use plant medicine to help heal the bloodline in that way. For example, you might have a plant medicine that's connected to the grandmothers or the, the women or the feminine energy. And, you know, you, you're in ritual with this, this medicine and praying and, you know, asking for information to come through. And it will teach you and tell you what needs to be healed um, and what the grandmothers have to say. Some plant medicine also is used to help people through a dark night of the soul. So to help to lift the mood and, you know, bring in light and um, heal in that way. We also use plants in the ash form. So kind of like burnt down in a concentrated form to help with healing. And it's also been known to used as to help to remove ticks off of animals um, in, in the Zulu culture. In terms of rock people, we do tend to get dreams or visions or guidance towards using certain rocks collected from certain places with certain energies, or we could be directed to use certain crystals and the healing properties of the crystals in our healing work. Yes, both well done.